Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, March 11th. Tesla is facing criminal allegations regarding Tesla's Gigafactory Berlin as environmentalists accuse the automaker of suspected water pollution and possible environmental crime. Now, for years, Tesla has been in battle with environmentalists in Germany who've tried to stop or slow down construction and production at Gigafactory Berlin. Their complaints have ranged from deforestation to water usage, and now they're going a step further. The Association for Nature and Landscape in Brandenburg has filed three criminal charges with the public prosecutor's office. It's not clear what the prosecutor's office is going to do with those allegations quite yet, but Tesla has had strong backing from local politicians and civil servants in Brandenburg. Tesla has announced its new Model S vehicle comes with a new high-visibility glass roof following a slight refresh to the model. Tesla claims that the new roof lets in five times more light and weighs less compared to the previous glass roof while still providing the same level of UV protection. The automaker claims that it is also improving handling by helping lower the center of gravity. There's been a sort of stealth refresh of the Model S and X vehicles going on for a while. The main reason appears to be the integration of Tesla's hardware version 4.0 autopilot and self-driving sensors, and they also have the opportunity to add a few more features. Tesla just recently added a new color and also started to make a round steering wheel available instead of only having the yoke option. Interestingly, in its new communications about the updated Model S and X, Tesla doesn't discuss the new autopilot hardware, presumably because those changes are also expected to come to the Model 3 and Y. Tesla's Cybertruck size has apparently been revealed through executives at Investor Day, confirming that it's just a bit smaller than the original prototype. Matthew Donegan Ryan, a Tesla investor who attended Tesla's Investor Day earlier this month, claims to have talked to Tesla executives at the event who confirmed many new details. Most notably, he claims that Tesla confirmed the dimensions of the Cybertruck, saying it was 5% smaller than the original prototype. He claims the Cybertruck is about the same exterior dimensions as a F-150 Raptor Super Crew, although the bed of the Cybertruck is a little longer. Also of note was that the Cybertruck will have five seats instead of the six-seat configuration that was on the original. We should soon know more information about the Cybertruck, as the automaker is getting close to bringing the vehicle to production this very summer. Ford Motor Company is offering a Type A electric school bus package based on the top-selling e-transit commercial van. The e-transit is already shaping out to be a game-changing electric van, with Ford claiming 95% of the electric van market at one point. I'm sure that won't last forever. The e-transit is showing its versatility again, as Wanda Young, the Global Chief Marketing and Experience Officer at Ford Pro, shared an image of a Type A electric school bus already decked out. Ford says the e-transit is the first van from a full-line automaker to offer a Type A school bus on an electric powertrain. And depending on bureaucratic red tape and earmarking, new incentives make them nearly free to obtain for school districts. Ford is one of a handful of companies racing for federal subsidies through those sales. Of all companies, Mitsubishi has revealed a new electrified business plan called Challenge 2025, it involves four new EVs, including an electric pickup. I actually nearly forgot about Mitsubishi if it wasn't for the iMev, an early EV from almost 15 years ago. Mitsubishi, like Nissan, let go of an early lead and hasn't really touched electric cars since. But now they seem a little bit more inclined, kind of. There's a little bit of a caveat. As part of Mitsubishi's new strategy, the automaker plans for 100% of their sales to be electric or hybrid by the year 2035. So considering that the Japanese automaker has seen a dip in their plug-in hybrid sales in recent years, I'm going to guess that that decision to remain on the hybrid train was a difficult one. With Mitsubishi being one-third owned by Nissan, I'm going to look into my crystal ball a few decades and predict that this is one brand that will not survive the electric transition, at least not with their current ownership intact. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section on YouTube. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. 
For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. VinFast is facing another setback in its U.S. electric vehicle expansion. The EV automaker announced on Friday that it will postpone its plans to begin production at its EV plant in North Carolina until 2025. Previously, they had planned to begin production in July of 2024. The company initially claimed that they would invest up to $2 billion for the first phase of the North Carolina manufacturing site with 150,000 annual vehicle capacity. In July, the county rewarded VinFast with a $1.3 billion incentive package. Fancy that. However, VinFast is still awaiting a permit from the U.S. Army of Engineers designed to minimize water and wetland damages after receiving their air quality permit from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality just last month. So now VinFast is pushing the plans back. In Electrex take, VinFast's timeline was quite ambitious to begin with, so it's not terribly surprising to see a delay at this point. Taking a look at an update to a previous story, Ford has issued a recall related to its production halt on the F-150 Lightning over battery issues discovered during production. The recall will only affect 18 vehicles. Ford quickly put a stop shipment on all vehicles currently being shipped to customers and dealers and paused production. However, they did not initiate a stop sale. We later found out that the issue was one vehicle caught on fire at a holding lot on Ford's manufacturing facility. But now Ford has identified 18 affected trucks, which makes their way into the hands of customers. And they have already sent the word out to hunt them down, like the quality inspection dissenters that they are. Those lawless trucks trying to escape justice makes my blood boil. Despite Nissan recently announcing that it will boost efforts to bring electric vehicles to market, production of their first electric SUV, the Nissan Aria, is running one-third short of what was planned. Three sources familiar with the matter, with the planning notes reviewed by Reuters, show that Nissan Aria production is not even close to target. Part of Nissan's new EV powertrain approach involves combining electric vehicle and hybrid production on the same line, which is proving to be, quote, an extremely, extremely high challenge. This is according to the sources. Now, furthermore, after a fire broke out at the Chinese supplier Wuxi Wellnu Microelectronics factory in January, Nissan has been facing a shortage of plating for electric components. Nissan has aimed for production levels of around 400 Arias per day, which would be about 100,000 per year. However, that has fallen significantly short. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Wolfgang Pryor says, Beware the dummy camera. It's the eye of the Terminator, which will become alive when Starnet RV becomes conscious. Actually, Wolfgang, Tesla has previously poked fun at the idea of their car being a modern-day Frankenstein. About three years ago, Tesla was using the HAL 9000 image for their century mode, bringing to mind thoughts of artificial intelligence usurping human dominance. MGM, who owns the rights, wasn't terribly pleased, so Tesla had to change, and now they use the robot from the video game Portal instead. I'm sure Tesla wouldn't be opposed to the Terminator hand or something else to use, but that's what we got. If there's one thing that Tesla has brought to the car market, it's a sense of humor. But then again, the Mitsubishi iMev, that's pretty funny too. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day. About the Cybertruck as the automaker is getting close to bringing the vehicle to production this very summer. Close.